welcome back. According to the CDC, up to one in four adults in the United States have a disability. In the month of March, agencies and organizations work towards increasing public awareness of the contributions and the potential of Americans with disabilities. Join me to discuss disability awareness and the organization who helps support those with disabilities is CEO and President of Independence Care System, Regina Martinez Estela, and a health home advocacy specialist for ICSNY, Marcus Johnson. I want to thank you both for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for Good. having us. Now, Regina, can you tell me about the Independence Care System? Yes, absolutely. Um, ICS is a nonprofit organization with a mission of supporting people, adults with physical disabilities, to live independently in the community. We were founded in 2000 by a group of innovative professionals and consumers who came together with the goal of creating an organization that listened to the community that we sought to serve and responded by developing programs to meet their needs. We are the first and only health home in New York State designated to serve adults with physical disabilities. The health home is not a place. It's a comprehensive program that focuses on supporting members to remain healthy, mobile, and independent in the community. Now, Regina, what are some ways ICS acknowledges Disability Awareness Month? Well, Disability awareness is not an event at ICS. Um, it's core to our values and principles. So it's something that we practice every day of the year. We do appreciate the attention that you know, dedicating a month to these kinds of issues brings to the issues of disability. So to give you a few examples of things that we have done and that we are doing, we, um, as an organization, we watched together the film Crip Camp and Crip Camp is a film about a young group of people with physical disabilities at summer camp and the resulting disability rights movement that grew from those people coming together. It, um, we watched the movie as an organization. We came together in discussion groups. And then we invited Judy Human and Marcus led us in a discussion with Judy Human to discuss the movie. And um, Judy Human was a um, extraordinary woman who is frequently referred to as one of the founders of the disability rights movement in this country. And sadly, she recently passed away. But that's one example of, of how we um, recognize disability awareness and how we work in that area. And Marcus, can you actually tell me a little bit more about that experience? Oh, I, it was just so moving to, uh, if anyone knows about Judy Human and what she has contributed to the community of people with disabilities. It was just an extraordinary moment where I got to speak to one of our leaders in the movement, the ICON, and uh, the whole organization was wide on the Zoom call. And um, it was a fire wrap questioning with Judy Human. And um, I believe the whole organization gained from it where they were able to interject, ask questions, and see where we were moving forward or where we're going with the community of people with disabilities and going from disability rights to disability justice. Now, Marcus, can you just also explain, you know, what are some challenges and barriers that people with disabilities face that others may not automatically recognize? Oh, we face, other than this constant stereotyping, um, the stigma and the discrimination, people in the community need to understand that for people with disabilities to get great access to healthcare, we are faced with the barriers of attitudinal barriers, physical barriers or architectural barriers, and most definitely systemic barriers. But the most by far difficult is the attitudinal barriers because people's per per perceptions are impacting our reality. So people believe what we can and cannot do. And we can do a whole lot if people would stop limiting us and we would stop, stop being ordinary because we're extraordinary in that sense. And that's the attitude, you know, because I can't change people's perceptions of how they believe I can be, but I try to be present all the time and to change that narrative. And physical accessibility is a big issue. I, we can't even get into medical facilities. And if we can't, and then when we get in, it's challenging because the hospital uh, tables don't go up and down. I mean, the examination tables don't. 
and it's challenging to get onto tables. Staff is not aware of how to assist people with physical disabilities or disabilities in general. And systemically, policies are being made all the time without our presence there. So though it's those three barriers that are impacting people with disabilities on a daily basis. Now, you know, the hospital was mentioned, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that because, Regina, I wanted to ask you, um, according to the ICS, people with disabilities face disparities, making them more vulnerable to lower health outcomes. Can you just expand on this a little bit more? Um, I think we may have heard why we, we hear some of those outcomes, but can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, ab absolutely. In New York State, one in five people has a, a disability and 11% of the population has limited mobility. But building on what Marcus was just talking about, there are physical barriers. So the things that Marcus talked about in terms of height adjustable tables that would allow somebody with a disability to be able to transfer onto that table. Weight scales that are wheelchair accessible so that somebody can roll onto the, onto the scale and be weighed. But let me just give you a very concrete example. About a week ago, we had a group of 20 members in our Bronx office who were meeting with State Senator Rivera, who's a representative from the Bronx. And he asked them, and the group was ranged in age from, you know, 20s to their 60s, all wheelchair users. And he asked this group of people how, whether or not they had ever been examined outside of their wheelchairs during a primary care visit. And not one person in that room could say that they had been examined outside of their wheelchair at, during a primary care visit that just speaks volumes to the equity issues, the health equity issues that people with physical disabilities face, and then the resulting disparities, right? So people with physical disabilities or women with physical disabilities are no more likely, for example, to get breast cancer, but they are much more likely to die of breast cancer prematurely. And why is that? The reason is because they have less access to mammography screening, and then and so therefore they are diagnosed later, and they receive less aggressive treatment once they are died because we value their lives less. Marcus spoke to the issue of preparing medical personnel, clinicians to work with people with physical disabilities. There is no medical school curricula, nursing school curricula today that speaks to the needs of people with disabilities. And could you just imagine a doctor or a nurse coming out of their clinical training and not learning about diabetes management? More people in the United States have a disability than diabetes, but we don't train our clinical professionals to, to, um, to know about disability. And a few things that ICS is doing around that is we worked with Health and Hospitals Corporation to develop access to mammography. So now the Health and Hospitals Corporation in every borough has trained staff that can perform mammographies on women with physical disabilities, increasing their access to preventative care. And just this week, we launched a program with Woodhall Hospital to um, create a center of excellence for primary care for people with physical disabilities. So we, it can be done. We just have to invest in it. Now, Marcus, can you tell me a little bit more about your advocacy efforts? Oh, we've done a great deal with independent care system being by our side. And um, I co-lead a group called Civic Seek for Disability Rights with uh, my co-leader, Sharifa Abuhanda. And what we've done for our members, we have a platform that speaks to our concerns and it's been so effective we've, we've got the, in the um, New York State Department of Health to meet with us on a quarterly basis to address our concerns and concerns that we have definitely tried to where we have our uh, working wheelchairs in our home and we have a backup wheelchair just in case something happens to our primary care our primary chair we also work efforts where our members can have more catheters. It's funny to tell a little story, a catheter is where individuals that cannot void or pee on their own um, need a, a catheter to help them do that 
up on that action that people take for granted. And they were giving us one time 60 and our advocacy work has made it uh, where we get 90 catheters in a month. So we can pee more than twice a day. You know, people don't take that, take that for granted. But now that our advocacy work has done that, we've a lot, they have allotted more catheters for us to perform what we need, need to do to live in our community and in a host household in a healthy way. So our, our efforts have made great ch changes in, uh, in the community. And right now what we're doing with the independent care system by our side with the, with the civic suite that I'm a part of, we're working for a specialized program for people with physical disabilities. And when I say specialized, I mean equitable. An uh, equitable pro program that meets the needs of people with physical disabilities. Now, can you actually... I believe, uh, can you just talk about the need for a specialized health home plan just to further support people with disabilities? I didn't hear the, the first part of the question. Uh, the need for a specialized health home plan to further support people with disabilities. Oh yeah, it, it's, uh, I'm sure Regina can speak to it as well. It's that there's many other programs out there that the Department of Health uh, definitely looks to, like mental health and hygiene, uh, AIDS and HIV and uh, intellectual disabilities, but people with physical disabilities, we want to stay in the community and how we can stay in the community is having a coordinated disability competent care. And ICS is that. They, their care has allowed me to stay in the community 31 years. This year I'll be in at home 32 years and I have yet to be hospitalized on a long-term basis because ICS has brought that component where we have our expert nurse that handles um, pressure wounds. And that's something I cope with. But the fact that we have somebody on our, in our organization and on our team, I've had doubts with it, but I have come through because they've been by my side. And I can talk for other members as well where they reach out, listen, this is what you need to do. We're going to provide you with this. We're going to provide with you with that. So it, they have changed the way um, our community of people with disabilities live independently in our community. Now, I want to ask, I think this is so important to know, Regina, you know, why is it important that your organization is the only organization that has expert staff to deal with people or to assist people with um, disabilities? Yeah, so I mean, just building on what Marcus just said and what it means to have disability competent stuff and what it means to be expert in, in working with people with physical disabilities are the, we, over our 20 year history, what we have learned are, is what are those things and situations that lead to poor health outcomes for people with physical disabilities? And what we learned in those 20 years is that it is things like pressure injuries or wounds, urinary tract infections, respiratory infections. And so, and, and I think a very, very key component about what we do is that we work alongside our members so that we are not the experts. Our members are the experts in their care and we collaborate with them to understand their needs and then to work to meet those needs and to train our staff to be able to identify those risk areas and address them before they become an issue that requires a hospitalization. And that's why we need experts in this area because without that, people with dis physical disabilities would not, there is no other program that can do this today and they would not be get getting that care. And so when Marcus says that he has been injured for 32 years and has not had a hospitalization in that period of time, or he's been living at home, that is, it's remarkable. I don't know that we can ex give you enough emphasis on why that, how remarkable that is. Um, and it is because we work with Marcus. Marcus tells us and Marcus knows his body better than we do. And we can, and, but in working together, we bring the clinical expertise and Marcus brings the knowledge about himself. And together we're able to achieve those kinds of outcomes. Well, in the spirit of nothing about us without us, right, Marcus? Exactly. I want to thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin, for having us. We appreciate it.
Thank you. Right back with more open right after this. <laughs> 